Greetings, beloved, in the awesome, wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. I want to greet you all today and want to thank you so much for joining me today for our Sunday morning service. I thank God for this glorious privilege we have uh, to come together, especially on this very same day, because you know what? God has been with us. God has taken us through throughout the year in 2020. Now we have stepped into the new year of 2021 and indeed it has been the hand of the Lord all the way. It has been the doing of the Lord all the way. We can say once again and again and again, Ebenezer, he has taken us this far. We're looking forward to a grand new 2021. We are looking forward to his having God speak and minister to our lives and transform us forever. So we want to get to the word of God for today and we want to read the Bible. We are going to read a number of verses today as we share with you the theme for 2021. Today my assignment will be to bring forth to you the theme for 2021 that we are going to be running with even in this year. So I believe that you would really love to hear what will be the theme for Pesi Silo Bengula for 2021 and you want to participate and engage with us even as we pursue this theme to see what the Lord would want to do even in our life. So this year's theme, people of God, is going to be a church that is filled with the Spirit. A church that is filled with the Spirit. That is going to be our theme for 2021 as BICC of Begula and we are going to be basing our teaching and our preaching even on that same theme and we are going to be reading the Bible from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 where we have extracted our theme from Ephesians chapter 5 and specifically we are going to be using verse 18 which says do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery instead be filled with the spirit instead be filled with the Spirit. And we are saying this year we want to be a church that is filled with the Spirit. A church that continues to live a life exhibiting and showing that indeed we are filled and we continually desire to be filled with the Spirit. That is what is going to be our theme for the year. And for today, as we, as we want to, to expound on this theme, we want to bring to break it down for us and we understand and appreciate what we'll be talking about. We want to read a number of verses that are going to help me buttress what I want to share with you today. So we're going to read John chapter 16 and we'll read verse 7. And we're also going to read Acts chapter 2 and we'll begin to from verse 1 up to verse 4. And for our theme verse, which is Ephesians 5 verse 18, for us to, uh, to, to, to understand the, con I mean the, 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 the context, I would love that we we'll read from verse 15 until we get to verse 21. So I have mentioned three three. Uh, verse that we're going to be reading, we're going to be reading Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 21. We read John chapter 16, verse 7, and then we read Acts chapter 2, and verse 1 up to verse 4. So we're going to start by reading John chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 7. It says, But I tell you the truth, it is for your good, it is for your own good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And then we read Acts chapter 2. It will start from verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's now go to Ephesians chapter 5 and we are going to start from verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, we will start from verse 15. It says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, excessive indulgence in sex, drugs, or alcohol. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father for everything 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then verse 21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. May God bless the reading of his word, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord God Almighty, for the glorious privilege we have, King of Glory, to come together once again, especially at the beginning of the year. My God, we still have a testimony, and we still testifying and saying, Oh, my soul will magnify the Lord because he has been good. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. He has taken us this far. Indeed, we say Ebenezer. Mighty God, we want to thank you today. You are such a good God. Oh God Almighty, you have been such a good God. My Father, even as we begin the year, we begin, oh God Almighty, in the Word. Oh God, we begin in the Word and we trust that your Word will speak to us today. We pray that Heavenly Father, you will ground us in your Word. My God, that the Spirit of God will manifest himself, himself in our lives, oh God Almighty, and transform us forever in the name of Jesus. We desire to be a church that is found, founded on your word, a church that is filled with the Spirit of God as according to what your word says, O oh God. Therefore, this morning we commit ourselves to hearing your word, we committing ourselves to studying your word, and allowing the Holy Spirit as a church to guide us, to teach us, to lead us, to mold us, to shape us, to make us to be what God desires of us to be. Even as I share your word this morning, Father, I pray that the Spirit of God will move in our life. The Spirit of God will bring understanding even unto us today in Jesus' name. After all has been said and done, I once again say, let all the glory be unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I have already said that we are talking about a title that I have entitled The Church That Is Filled With The Spirit because this is the theme that we have for 2021 as our church, as BSC Lopengu. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and it is one topic that I love so much. So as we discuss the subject of being filled with the Spirit, it will be necessary to take, the, to, of, to take note of the fact that as we read scripture, there are some instances, you know, when you read the Bible, there are some instances that you look at when you read about them, they, 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 they are narrating to us of, of how things happened then. And therefore it is our responsibility to be able to apply what the scripture is saying of what happened or what transpired then. And we, it, we apply it to our, our day-to-day lives today. For example, when we read the Bible in the book of John, we find Jesus interacting with his disciples and is sharing with them some important issues before he left for heaven. And in his sharing with them, at some point he tells them to go and wait for the, for, for the promise of the Holy Spirit. You read in the book of John, you read the book of Acts, at some point in time we find in Acts chapter 1, Jesus, the Bible says that on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples then, and he was telling them to go and wait for the promise of the Spirit. He is telling them to go and tarry in Jerusalem. But you will find that when you are now reading it and applying it to your context, to our context today, you cannot go and wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because when we have read as well in Acts chapter 2, we see the Bible showing us the fulfillment of the promise that was spoken by Joel, where the Bible says that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and the Spirit of God has been poured out to the church. And now we see it happened on the day of Pentecost when they were gathered together in one house. They were gathered together in, in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came. So it does not mean therefore that we also have got to go to Jerusalem and we gather in the upper room for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has already come. As I begin, I want you to put across these things to us so that we can understand that even when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's important to understand to the context of how we and then how we address Him, even in our context today. We will we, we hear of the work of the Holy Spirit and the promise of the Holy Spirit in the days of Jesus when He was still walking here on earth. And then we now then apply those scriptures to our context today. It's therefore important how then 
Do we apply these scriptures to our context? We don't have to be 120 and we go to, to wait and tarry in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit because He has already come and we have Him today. For, so, so for us who are living in the post-Christ dispensation, so to speak, we, 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 our approach to the Holy Spirit is rather different from the time of the disciples before Christ returned to heaven. At a time when Christ was here on earth, the disciples didn't have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The disciples didn't have the Spirit of God dwelling in them at the time when Jesus was still here on earth. He had to go to heaven for him to be able to send the Holy Spirit. That is why when we have read in John chapter 16 in verse 7, Jesus tells his disciples, it is for your own good, I am telling you the truth, it is for your own good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come. So the Holy Spirit had not yet come at the time when the disciples were working with Jesus here on earth. It had to be that Jesus goes to heaven and in his going to heaven then he was going to be able to send the Holy Spirit to come and be with them. And we see that in the that being fulfilled on the day of Pentecost where the Bible tells us then that on the day of Pentecost it fully come. The fulfillment of that day, when we, that which Jesus was speaking about, confirming what the prophets had already said, that in the last days the Holy Spirit would come. Then we find Jesus coming in to, to fulfill what the prophet had spoken about. And he say he, he is the one who is bringing the transition of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit from the dispensation of Christ himself. So he tells his disciples, it is for your own good that you, I go away, and if I have gone away, then the Holy Spirit is going to come. So then it was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, as I have already said. So we see the Bible telling us that on the day of Pentecost, they appeared under them, cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it set upon each and each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the issue now becomes, what then are you saying about us, Mzana, who are living in this dispensation, who are living in a, 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 a post-Christ dispensation? I am saying we are living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. You and I are living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. It, it does not mean that Christ is no more evident. It doesn't mean that the Father is no more evident. But then we are living in a time where the Spirit of God is the one that is at work preparing the church of God for the coming of Christ once again. Jesus is coming again and when he is coming for the, his church, he needs his church to be ready and the Holy Spirit is the one who is working today to prepare the church of God for the coming of the Messiah, for, I mean, for the coming of the Savior of the world, for the coming of Christ. He came the first time as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. When he is coming the second time, he will be coming as the judge. And when that time comes, he will be coming for a church that is ready. That is the bride that is going to be ready. And who is making the bride to be ready? It is the Holy Spirit. So it is important that you and I, as we live in this day, we understand that the Spirit of God has been given to you and to me and to us especially as a church, that he may work in our lives, that he may minister amongst us. So we are reading the Bible now in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, where Paul is now speaking to you and to me today, who are living in this dispensation, you and I who are living at this time. I want you to understand something here. You, 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 you see, when you read the book of Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us about the coming of the Holy Spirit and how he came, and then as, as, as they were gathered together and the Spirit of God came and they began to speak in other tongues and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and we see them being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. The Bible says there, there came some people around from different places, from different regions and they gathered together and because it was the day of Pentecost. The Bible tells us, no other day we're going to talk about the day of Pentecost, but we don't want to talk about that that much. On that very same day, we find Peter standing up and he's speaking to them. Peter is responding to a people who are looking at these ones who are speaking in tongues and praying in tongues and they are saying that they are drunk with wine. 
Then Peter stood up and in his, in his explanation, he explains to them that the Spirit of God is, is the fulfillment of promise. He has been promised to us. He has been promised to us who are living now and to those who are afar off. If you read there, you find Peter is explaining to them that the Holy Spirit is for them and even for those who are yet to come, to those who are going to come who are far off and to generations that are going to come, which include you and me who are living in who are living today. Peter is saying the promise of the Holy Spirit is not only for that time when they were there on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, but he is saying the promise of the Holy Spirit is even for those who are yet to come. Who he, he spoke at that time, speaking to the people that are listening to him at that time, but he is speaking as well of those who were yet to live, to, 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 to come and be born and live even post their time. Who are you and me who are living today? So the Holy Spirit is also for you and for me. It is also for the church of today. The Holy Spirit was for the church then and he is still for the church even today. So you and I have got to embrace and be filled with the Spirit. That's why then we go to Ephesians chapter 5 where we have read and the Bible is telling us about the Spirit of God. Paul is, is addressing the church in Ephesus and in that he charges them against some specific behaviors. Some that may lead them to missing heaven, you know. He speaks of what should not that what they should not do and what they should do. Because if you would have spoken to them about what they shouldn't do and the end of the day, it wasn't going to be enough. So Paul is addressing the church in Ephesus and he's telling them of some behaviors that are not supposed to be seen in the house of God. He is giving them specific behaviors that they're not supposed to, to be seen. In the house of God and he's telling them the, 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 those things that they should not do and then he goes further even to tell them of what they're supposed to do. So we are now going to look at Ephesians chapter 5 where we have read. He says in verse 15, do not be foolish but be wise. Do not be foolish but be wise. Again he says do not be foolish but understand the will of the Lord. That is in verse 17. And then again he says in verse 18, do not be drunk with wine. You see, there, there are a number of do not, do not, do not. And then after having have said that, he then tells us what we are supposed to do. He is telling us, do not be foolish, but be wise. Do not be foolish, but understand the will of the Lord. He says, do, do not be drunk with wine. Three things that he has, say, he has said. Do not be foolish. Do not be foolish again. And again he says, do not be drunk with wine. Why is he saying, why is he saying you should not be drunk with wine? He's saying you should not be drunk with wine. Because when you're drunk with wine, there is there are effects of being drunk with wine. Drinking wine and getting drunk is going to. To, to, to bring about, it's going to bring about a manifestation of the effect of the wine that you have drunk. The drinking of the wine is going to bring you to a point that when you are now drunk, there are some behaviors that are going to be seen from you. And it says, don't be drunk, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. What is debauchery? Debauchery is excessive indulgence in sex. In drugs or in alcohol, when somebody is, 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 is being led to debauchery, is being led to a behavior that is reckless, that is uncontrolled, a behavior that is showing that you are no more, and you are no more in control of yourself. There is no more self-control. You are no more in charge of yourself. Follow me and follow me very well, even as I explain this. Yes, I'm talking about being filled with the Spirit. I'm talking about a church that is filled with the Spirit. And Paul is saying, do not be drunk with wine. Because being drunk with wine will lead you to a behavior. There is a behavior, there is a way that we will see you behaving in. There is a way that we will see in you, you behaving in. And Paul is saying, be wise. Do not be foolish. Because drinking and being drunk with wine is being foolish. It is foolishness to be drunk with wine. It is being unwise to be drunk with wine. It is, it is, it is failing to redeem the times. It, it, it is failing.
failure to understand the times when you are being drunk with wine because being drunk with wine will lead you to excessiveness in life it will lead you to it will lead you to to indulging in excessive sex in excessive, excessive drugs in excessive, excessive alcohol in excessive behavior in general there are behaviors that are seen from somebody who has, who has been drunk with wine. There are effects of drinking and being drunk with wine. When you drink beer, there are things that you do because you have drank and you are drunk. You know some people when they, are, they have drank beer, you know what happens with them. Some are talkative. Some they just keep quiet and they don't speak. Some you find them you know, drinking and saying, I want to drink for that person. The way that he handled me, I will have to drink for them. Because they know that when they are sober, they can't face that kind of a person. They can't face their issues when they are sober. They want to first go and drink and be drunk for them to be able to confront someone that they will be afraid of. Maybe somebody that them somebody is afraid of. And then they will say, okay, I have to go and drink first and be drunk. Because when I am drunk, then I can be able to face them. They, 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 they can't face them when they are sober. You know, some people when they drunk, you know, you have seen people that are drunk wherever you are. You have seen somebody who's drunk before. You know, some people when they are drunk, they, 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 they drive recklessly. That's why we are, while we are still in the festive season, you know, we are still in the festive mood. We are continually being told to, 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 not, to not drink and drive. Because those who tell you that don't drink and drive, they know that when you are, you are, you are drunk, you can't drive properly under the influence of alcohol. You are advised not to drink and drive. Because when you are drunk, you are now under the influence of alcohol. You can't control yourself well and you can't see clearly. Your, your, your vision is, 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 is affected. Your, your, your vision is impaired at that time when you are drunk with wine. You, you can't drive clean properly. That's why you find your car is moving to the left and to the right all the way. Because you are now drunk, you are under the influence of beer. And that's why you are advised not to drive. There are behaviors that we see from people when they are drunk with wine. And Paul is saying, do not be drunk with wine. Church of God. Do not be drunk with wine. I wish I could have said these things even before we go to Christmas to tell some people, hey, I know you want to drink and to be drunk. I am saying, do not be drunk because it is foolishness to be drunk. Because why is it so? You will be under the influence of beer. Your behavior will be under the, you will be, you, it, will be, it will be influenced by the beer you have drunk. Beer has got an influence on you. When you speak, it's no more you who is speaking, but it is the beer you have drunk. I wish you could hear what's happening here. But then Paul is saying, while if I have told you don't be drunk with wine, I then tell you what you are supposed to do. I then give you a replacement of you being drunk with wine. I want to replace the, the, the behavior of being drunk with wine with the right and proper behavior. And he says, instead of being drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. Paul gives us a better solution to being drunk with wine. He brings the same concept and puts it as being filled with the Spirit. Why did we have talked about you not being drunk with wine? We are saying in the same vein, if we have told you to not be drunk with wine, we are saying be filled with the Spirit. This is how the church is supposed to be. This is what is supposed to happen to the church time and again. Church of God, we are going to seek to be filled with the Spirit all the time. Because as much as being drunk with wine has some effects, has some byproducts, or there is a manifestation of some form of behavior on somebody who has been drunk with wine, therefore equally the same consequently when you have been filled with the spirit there is a behavior there is an outcome there is going to be some effects of somebody who has been filled with the spirit oh glory to god glory to god when you have been filled with the spirit there is a kind of a behavior that we are going to see from you as much as we have said that when you are drunk with wine you behave in a reckless way you behave in a in, a, in an uncontrolled way you behave in, in an undesired way because you have seen that some people sometimes when they have drank beer and they are drunk they drink so much that when they, 
woke up the following day, they were talking about the papalas, you know. The, 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 the following day, they can't even wake up. Their body is filled with so much pain. They, 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 they can't do anything. They are feeling pain all over their body because they've been drinking the whole day yesterday. And when they woke up, wake up, wake up at night, the following day, they, they, they can't do anything because of what they drank yesterday. They, 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 some of them, they know that they fight, they get into fight, they, they cause so much commotion in their lives. And, and then the following day, they are regretting all that they did because they were drunk. So when you are drunk with beer, you find that you always regret at the end of the day. Some even regret of wasting their money for by drinking, by involving themselves in drunkenness. So then if equally the same, if drinking beer will lead you to those kind of being drunk will lead you to those negative effects, then being filled with the spirit will give you some positive results. So therefore we want to emphasize you being filled with the Spirit. Because the Bible tells us that, the, 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 Jesus tells us that the Spirit of God is going to come. He spoke to the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he says that you are going to be baptized with the Spirit. He is telling them that there will come a time when, yes, John baptizes you with water, but there will come a time when you will be baptized with the Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, we see the disciples being filled with the Spirit. So it gives us an impression that when we talk about being filled, we are also talking about being baptized with the Spirit. So you find that these words are used interchangeably. The word meaning, I mean, being baptized with the Spirit and the word being filled with the Spirit. They, they, they are at times being used interchangeably because Jesus spoke to his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1 and he says that for John baptizes with water but before many days from now you will be baptized with the Spirit and then on the day of Pentecost the author of the book of Acts records what Jesus had spoken of and he says on the day of when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all filled with the Spirit so when we talk about being filled with the Spirit, we're talking about being baptized with the Spirit. So when you're being baptized, it means the word baptized is, 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 is a word that is formulated from the word, Greek word meaning baptizo. Baptizo is the Greek word where we derive the word we baptize and it, it means to be immersed. So when you're being filled with the Spirit, it means to be immersed in the Spirit. Hallelujah. It means to be filled, to be immersed. You, you, you are subjected. You are, you, you are like drowned in the Spirit. You, 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 you have the Spirit of God all over you. You have the Spirit of God having influence, the dominating influence in your life. So when you're being filled with the Spirit, you have the Spirit of God Baptizing, you're being baptized in the Spirit. You are being immersed in the Spirit. And you have the Holy Spirit having full control of your life. So we are saying this year, as a church, we desire to be immersed in the Spirit. We desire to be filled with the Spirit. And I want you to understand this. Again, when you read from the original Greek text, this verse is actually telling us, that this is a, a present, it's in the present continuous tense. This verse that says, be filled with the Spirit, is, is written in the present continuous tense. It, therefore, it means you are, you are, be, you are being filled. You, are, you, you have to be, to, to be being filled with the Spirit. There is an experience, there is an initial feeling and the continuous feeling again. You, you don't only get filled in the initial feeling, but you continue desiring to be filled and to be filled and to be filled again and again. So it, it is in the present continuous tense. I hope you are hearing what I'm trying to put across to you today. So we're talking about being filled with the Spirit. We're talking about you being filled in the initial experience and then you continue again to, to be filled again and again. Just like somebody who will go and drink beer. They don't just drink beer one day. Even though they have drank beer today and they got drunk and they regret, 
After three, four, five days, you find them back at the beer hall, drinking again. So in the same understanding, Paul is bringing the concept of being filled with the Spirit. And he's saying, you and I, us as a church, we need to continue to be filled with the Spirit again and again. He's saying, in other words, he's saying, hey, do not be drunk with wine, but be drunk with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In other words, he's saying, do not be drunk with with wine, but with the spirit, but be, be, be drunk with the spirit in God, be filled with the spirit. Then the positive effects of being filled with the spirit are going to be seen. I want to draw to a conclusion today, and I am saying we are going to see some, 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 either there, there are positive effects of being filled with the spirit. And we read when we have read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, Paul is telling us. That we should not be drunk with wine because it leads to A, B, C, and D. When you are drunk with wine, it will lead you to debauchery. But then he is saying instead, it, because it, it is unwise to be drunk with wine, because it is foolishness to be drunk with wine. Because, but then he is saying, we need to be wise, redeeming the times, for the days are evil. Know, the, know how to live and know the will of God. Because I want to believe that it is the will of God to be filled with the Spirit. It is the will of God to be filled, to be, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It is, it, is made, it is making the most of every opportunity to be filled with the Spirit. It is redeeming the times to be filled with the Spirit. Because Paul earlier has told us, do not be wise, do not be, do not be unwise, but be, but be wise, redeeming the times for the days are evil, knowing how to live and making the most of every opportunity. And he's saying to us, I want to believe he's saying to us, redeem it is, it is redeeming the times to be filled with the Spirit. It is knowing how to live to be filled with the Spirit. It is making the most of every opportunity to be filled with the Spirit. Because it is more beneficial to be filled with the Spirit more than being drunk with wine. Because it is more beneficial to be under the dominating influence of the Spirit rather than to be under the dominating influence of beer. Because when you are under the dominating influence of beer, there are negative things that you do. There are negative behaviors that we see from you when you are drunk with wine. Therefore, you have got to be wise and rather being drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. Because there are positive effects and the Bible is showing us and it says in verse 19, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Just like we saw where the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 2, and on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, they were filled with the Spirit. They began to speak with, 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 with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. One thing that we see immediately when they have been filled with the Spirit is that they spoke. There is always going to be a speaking when you have been filled with the Spirit. Somehow there are going to be words that you are going to say when you have been filled with the Spirit. You know somebody who is drunk, when they are drunk, some of them sometimes, one behavior of someone who is drunk, you find they speak a lot. They say so many things until they mess up. But I am saying be wise today, be filled with the Spirit. And you know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Some people are not good in their tongue. They don't know how to speak. I am giving you advice today. Be filled with the Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit, you know how to speak. You know what to speak, when to say it, and how to say it. And you will be, when you are filled with the Spirit, the Bible says they spoke in other, in other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, it is because you are filled with the Spirit. It happens when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. So glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, you continue to see them speaking in other tongues. If you go to Acts chapter 9 and then verse 17 to 20, we find the, 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 the people of God being filled with the Spirit and they proclaim Jesus in the synagogue. We find again in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 31, the Bible says, and when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were, 
assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with great boldness. You read again the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 67. It says Zechariah was filled with the Spirit and he prophesied. The Bible says again in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 8 to 12, Peter filled with the Spirit spoke the word of God with boldness. The key is speaking. When you are filled with the Spirit, you will speak. You may have been silent for so long, but I say wait until you are filled with the Spirit. Wait until you are under the dominating influence of the Spirit. Church of God, we have been silent for so long. The world is crying out and dying out there. They have no answer. We need a church that is filled with the Spirit because we need to be the prophetic voice in the world and speak unto the leaders and speak unto the world and give them the word of God that is able to change their lives. It can only be when the church has been filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. Number two, the Bible says that when you are filled with the Spirit, you will sing. Verse 19 says, singing and making music in your heart to the Lord. There are situations, church of God, sometimes that we, you will need to just sing a song unto the Lord. And they and, 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 and issues will be taken care of. You are in trouble and you are wondering what's going to happen. Just sing a song unto the Lord. Sing a song of hope, a song of faith in the Lord and see the Lord doing something in your life. It happens when you have been filled with the Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit, we are going to see you always giving thanks. The Bible says in verse 20, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you are filled with the Spirit, you will find yourself giving thanks. In the previous month, in the month of November, actually, we are talking about giving thanks. And I am saying, if you are going to be able to live a life of giving thanks, you have got to be filled with the Spirit. If the Church of God is going to be able to give thanks at all times, and in all circumstances, like, like, like that Paul will say in Thessalonians, you have got to be filled with the Spirit. You will always be thankful. There is a, there is a virtue in that, that, that is lacking in the Church today, that is to give thanks. And you are saying, we need as a Church of God to be filled to, with, the, with the Holy Ghost. We need to be filled, to be, to, to be, to be submerged under the dominant influence of the Spirit, then we will know how to give thanks at all times. And number, and number four, it says, submitting one to another out of reverence for Christ. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, one thing that we see, it is you submitting one to another. Submission, church of God, one to another, it is important. You and I have got to learn to submit one to another. And how are we going to be able to, to achieve that easily? We are going to do it when we have been filled with the Holy Ghost. I told you that being filled with the Spirit, there is an initial experience of being filled with the Spirit, and then there is a continuous experience of being filled again and again and I am saying as a church we need to come to a point whereby we get to be filled with the Spirit because when you are filled with the Spirit we will be able to speak to, to, to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs we are going to sing psalms and, and hymns unto the Lord making music in our heart to the Lord we are going to be always thankful and giving thanks to God for everything when we have been filled with the Spirit we are going to learn to submit one to another in reverence unto God you know you ask a man who lives with a woman that is submissive unto her, unto him, you will see, you will look, you will see a man who is always having a smile on his face. Ask a leader who's got, who's got people around him and under him that are submissive unto him, and you see a leader who is who's glowing and who is growing because submission one to another is a virtue from the Lord, and we need as a church. To, to learn to submit one to another and it can only happen when we are filled with the Spirit of God. Therefore, what am I saying to us today, Brother One? I am saying, I am I'm urging you to determine in your heart as an individual, to acquaint yourself this year with the Spirit of God. I urge you today to purpose in your heart as a church that you will seek after Him. You will desire to, to walk with Him and hear and experience Him in your life. I challenge you today to pursue a life 
filled with the Spirit and you will begin to see positive results in your life. This year 2021 can be a great year for you only when you allow the dominating influence of the Spirit of God in your life. May God bless you and have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on.